downsides of using recycled wood is that we didn't really get to choose the size of how big this kitchen top is going to be, which means that this area is actually really small for the size of the sink. As you can see, it's really thin here, so we basically cut out the majority of the wood. So now this isn't very structural or strong in the slightest, and because of its recycling, there's a crack in it, so this is all broken. So, it's time to abandon ship, and I'm going to build a brand new kitchen that is custom made for the sink and the hob, and I think that's the best way to go around this. new kitchen top is underway and what I did was I found a nice bit of old wood like a big plank that we had um, and I'm going to make this the surround for the cooker and I'm going to add this so that even along the edges there's all the bark because I really like the edge of this bark it looks really really nice so I'm just cutting a little 45 degree angle and then I'm gonna put that in there cut another 45 degree angle and then start putting it all together and creating my worktop. Here is my almost finished kitchen top. I have cut out the little back bits here for the hinges and this is generally the shape. I use lots of like bits of spare wood and it doesn't look very pretty right now but it will look a lot better once it's all sanded down with the actual sink and hob in there. If I lift it up so it fits in, you can see it looks really nice. I think it's actually quite lucky the other one didn't fit because actually this turned out much better than the other one. Well, I'm chuffed with the results. It looks great. I am. Um, I'm almost glad the other piece actually ended up getting uh, getting messed up. Uh, the new wood here looks really, really nice, and I really like this like bark edge that you get as you go around. Along with the kitchen top, I've also got my water tank and my wastewater tank with a little submersible pump and the tubes that I need. I've got the cables under there, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount it under there now and uh, see if it starts working, get it all running and um, see how well this goes. As I mentioned before, in the with the electrical kit, one of the cables that comes off is it runs to the water pump and the tap switch and I was wondering what the hell the tap switch was but when my kit came the tap actually has two cables so I think we all know where this is going and funnily enough they're both the same color brown and black so I just have to join those up and then on this end with the blue and black I just have to join up the pump and we are cooking on gas or washing on water I've only done um, sort of a temporary connection, I've only just twisted the wires together. I just want to test if these bits work. If they work, I will actually mount these better, like I'll actually connect these up properly. Um, but there's no point in me doing that and then finding out I've done something wrong and having to undo it all. So on my tap I've got obviously a hot and a cold port. I've only, I'm only going to actually have cold water, I don't need hot water for this. So I'm going to put just the cold water tube on and when I test it out I'm going to just put like a little container just below the hot tap. I don't know if water would come back through if like 
as you switch between, as you rotate the tap between different temperatures, I don't know whether water might come back out of the hot tap because there's nothing connected to it. Got my wires crudely wired up, but kept keeping the ports apart from each other. Got my sink tap, everything set up, ready. Got my water with my, my water bottle with my water in. Got my waste water bottle. Got all the pipes linked up. Got my submersible pump. Moment of truth. So that's now in. Oh god, I'm a little bit nervous. Oh yeah, that's it. I just need to put something over the hot water pipe. So I'm going to use the excess from this tube and I'm just going to literally put it over the end of the hot water one and just put it straight towards the waste water pipe as well. Just in case. I don't know which one's the water pump. Yeah, so as I was right, if you put the hot on, it starts to leak out the other side, so I'm just going to keep it fully on cold. But that's max chuff, but that is, you know, that's a reasonable pressure. There doesn't seem to be any leaking or anything bad going on. Next will be the gas, but I don't have all the parts for that just yet, so that will be in a later video. The weather I was trying to avoid has just come in a bit earlier than I expected, so I've had to shut myself in the van with a power lead and just crack on with some other little jobs that I can get done while I'm inside the van.